we were friends, then we had a falling out, then we became friends again. Mm -hmm. That was our thing. Yeah. What's your version of that? My version of that. And, and don't be sparing. You can be mean. No. <laughs> you can be like, you were a jerk in this way. I don't care. I don't know what it was. It's kind of vague. But I do remember saying, uh, <laughs> Mike, every time you talk to me, you're trying to get something. Oh, my gosh. And, and you were like, what? I'm just trying to. And you were asking for something. Yeah. And, and I was like, Mike, literally every time that you come to me, you're trying to get something and I, it, it, you should know that that is not a, you should know that it's obvious and it's not gonna help you. Oh, wow. So you and I met. Yes. 20, I mean, it's roughly 20 years ago. It was longer. It might've been 22 years ago, 21 years ago. I mean, I had just moved to New York and I opened for you. Were you in New York yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I opened for you I, in Jersey, I think. At, at the Catch, Catch a Rising, Rising Star. Yeah, at you the, and Cynthia, in the your Hyatt wife. Hotel. Yeah, when we met uh, the Hyatt Hotel in Princeton, New Jersey. Yeah. I think. Catch God. Rising Star. It was a comedy club in a hotel. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I'm and i pretty sure I drove to and fro with you. I hitched a ride with you and your wife, Cynthia, who is the feature act. Yeah. And I was the MC. I don't remember. What do the, you remember? I don't remember the ride. But I remember... I remember being there uh, and being relieved when I saw you because you were really funny. Oh. And I, Cynthia and I had been there. She was performing or I was performing. I don't think we were both on the show the time before. And there was this horrible comedian. Oh. I think he was the headliner, actually. Yeah. It was horrible. And he did like this misogynistic thing where he would like beg women to take their bras off on stage. Yeah. Yeah. What a different time. And, uh, and it was such a nightmare. And so when we were coming back to that, it was like PTSD. And, uh, and you were on stage and it was like, you just, you know, you just know, oh, this is, this is a new funny mind. <laughs> oh, oh, what relief. It, we, were so, we were so happy. We felt like we adopted you in, in a strange way. You did. We were like starting our little, our little uh, family. I remember perfectly <laughs> that I told you and Cynthia that I wanted to do a thing, and this was before I'd written Sleepwalk With Me and any of my solo shows, I wanted to do a thing where it combines drama and and comedy and a solo show, and maybe there's choreography to it, maybe there's music to it, I don't know. Like, it was yeah. kind of like this, I want to do something theatrical, and you were two of the first people ever in my whole life <laughs> when I pitched this idea to go, yeah, you should run with that. And it's really meaningful. It yeah. actually really stuck with me. Really? Yeah, because it's similar to, to your You're Doing Great book where it's like, I think you have a yes and quality in your life, mm -hmm. which, oh, is, yeah. which is a good quality to have, especially to other artists, especially like young kid moving to New York, doesn't have any idea what he's doing. Yeah. It's so funny because on my way here, I was just, you know, in the car just thinking about you and I was like, it's so great that he just made all this stuff. <laughs> really? Because I remember you saying like, like I make films that nobody will see or like I, I, I do this, whatever. But it was like now that like we've have some, some time away from the shop that you've been cobbling in all this time. Yeah. Like I was just like, wow, it's so, it's just great that these things did not exist before. And because you went to work and made these things, they're now, a part of the world. It's such a it's such a great, beautiful You're thing. You're still doing it. You're yeah. still being encouraging. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. I'm a dad, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dad. No, but it really is. It's a beautiful thing because there's like, people. You didn't, I mean, maybe they do realize. It's so many people walk around thinking I should make a film. Yes. Or I like you in the back of whatever we were yeah. driving. Like I'm thinking that maybe I should do that. To actually do it is a huge, huge. That's like Step. my main piece of advice for all young aspiring artists. Make something, figure out what, what you could have done better, make another thing. <laughs> yeah. Figure out what could be better, make another thing. Yeah, yeah, that was great. <clears throat> but then you and I, we were friends. You helped me. Uh, I opened for you a handful of times. You helped recommend me at clubs. Then we had a falling out. Then we became friends again. Mm -hmm. That was our thing. Yeah. What's your version of that? 
my version of that and and don't be sparing you can be mean no <laughs> you can be like you were a jerk in this way i don't care it wasn't mean but it, it was because uh cynthia was like aware of it too uh and you know i hate to criticize any of us when we're scrambling and yeah, trying yeah. to find our way yeah because and there's we're trying to find our way you're trying to I criticized you at one point you came and you asked you you asked for something or did something I don't even remember which is I don't even remember but I remember saying to you Mike and maybe it was maybe because you hadn't been around I don't know what it was it's kind of vague but I do remember saying uh, <laughs> Mike every time you talk to me you're trying to get something oh my gosh and and you were like, what? I'm just trying to, and you were asking for something. Yeah. And, and I was like, Mike, literally every time that you come to me, you're trying to get something. And I, it, it, you should know that that is not a, you should know that it's obvious and it's not going to help you. Oh, wow. And it's so hard because I don't have the things. Um, we're all trying to get somewhere. Right. We all want something from the people ahead of us. Um, but there has to be a, a truth to it. Like it has to be kind of, you know, I wanted things from people ahead of me. Yeah. There's a finesse to it. You know, there's a, there's a thing. <clears throat> yeah. And for whatever reason at that time, there wasn't the, it wasn't wrapped in the, in the kindness or the, we're still friends. It was just, it was just that. Yeah. And, and I said it purely as because we loved you. I yeah. said it purely because it wasn't like, fuck off, I never want to see you. It was, you should be aware of this thing that you're doing yeah, because it's transparent. And that was where I was coming from. I, that's almost exactly how I remember it. The funny detail that's <laughs> aside from that is you told it to me at the comedy cellar while I was sitting at a table <laughs> on a date. Oh no. <laughs> I don't picture that. I picture <laughs> me sitting and you being up. Oh, the other terrible. way around. Other way around. I was seated. You were up. Yeah. It was a low angle from yeah. you to me. And you said it. And you were right. Like I'm hugging myself. It's so... It was, yeah. First of all, you're, you were right. It's a great Achilles heel of my 20s. It's something I look back on and, and cringe at and try to learn from. And I'm probably still doing in some way, shape, or form still. We always are. Right. <clears throat> but but i was on a date it was, <laughs> oh, it was terrible it was, be, it was oh. before i met jen and it was like and and i and it, it wasn't even like i was on many dates but it was like <laughs> it, <clears throat> you said that and then i was left to be like with this person i was left um so yeah tom <laughs> tom's my friend <laughs> what a fucking asshole <laughs> <laughs> But it was um it was very sobering it was very sobering and i didn't was, like it it was helpful mm -hmm. it was tough love Mm -hmm. it hurt it hurt but i think hurt can be good it hurt a lot i didn't like it either um but for me to do that most people you if you don't care about somebody you're just like nothing well, you just walk right exactly yeah the biggest insult is to say nothing but i remember being angry about it which means that i probably had my feelings hurt like maybe we weren't hanging out yeah. Who knows? Like maybe I had other people in my life that weren't being nice to me. Who knows? But I definitely was feeling sensitive about it. It was, I mean, part of it, I remember, was trying to tell you, like, hey, just be aware of this. But um, but why I was, like, angry about it, I don't know. Well, it's funny because, like, I feel like the the, the zoom out lesson... And it's maybe for my life now still, and maybe it's for yeah. anyone listening to this is like, is like when you're creating things, like you do need to ask for a lot of favors, right? Like it's the nature of the thing. And there yeah. is, your word is finesse, but it's like, there is like a contextualization of acknowledgement mm -hmm. of like, hey, look, I'm really struggling to do this thing and you completely don't have to do this. But if you could possibly consider this, mm -hmm. I would love it if you consider this instead of like yeah. hey can i have this can i have this which i'm yeah. sure was probably my level of finesse which is zero 
Yeah. And I'm sure I had my own baggage and shit that was going on at the same time. Because I give people advice all the time. You have to ask for things. Yeah. You do have to ask. Constantly. You have to, like, say, you know, hey, you'd have this thing and you're in this place. I would love if you could. Yeah. You have to. But that can't be the, you can't be the, the one, you can't be the dog just constantly begging for a treat. Once in a while, I have to sit on their lap. <laughs> I think that's right. Right. I think my frustration at that time was that you were newly opening for Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. And which was a kind of a wild kind of yeah. flying to the moon kind of concept. Even. Yeah. And so my perception was, because you were like in private jets with Seinfeld around the world and playing yeah. in front of these. And in my mind, and this is a classic thing, you look at someone else, you go like, they have it all. Mm -hmm. I can ask them. Mm -hmm. They have it everything. <laughs> right. Meanwhile, you're raising kids. You have your own yeah. things that you're that are challenges. Life never, ne life never becomes not hard. Yeah. No, 100%. But I think in... I think in, at least in our business, there has to be, you have to have a friendship with people before you ask for stuff. Oh, yeah. So something must have happened in our friendship at the time, you know, Yeah. probably. Because like I have this new book coming out. Yeah. So last night, I'm, I want to send my book out to all of my famous friends. Yeah. Who might, who might put a thing on Instagram about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So... And you look through the list of people, and there are certain people I can ask because we haven't really been close. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you go to text them, and you're like, whoa, I haven't texted in two years. Yeah. This is a big ask. Yeah. But other people who I am who I have a relationship in, a, we, have, we love each other, I could ask them. Yeah. And they can say no, or they could say what, you know. So, like, we're always asking, we're always helping, but I think there has to be a foundation of friendship. I feel like I regret that it was so biting when we had that talk because it derailed us for years. Yeah, I know. But then we then we made up one at the cell at the table. Like <laughs> like literally just like me I think it was me being like, "Hey, I, I was wrong about that thing." And you were like, "I was probably wrong too." And yeah. then it, it was kind of, we just moved on from it. Yeah. No, 100%, you know. Which is, I think, sort of how you repair anything is just conceding that you're probably wrong. And the nuance of it is maybe not precisely what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. And you also, the care for the person overrides the... I am... I, you know, I hate to say that, but... I am a Scorpio. <laughs> oh no! Don't do this. I know. Don't, don't become this. But person, I have Tom. this trait. But the trait, <laughs> the trait that they always talked about about being a Scorpio. My mother was really into astrology, and the thing was like when people turn on you, they're dead to you. Yeah. You don't. It's a forgiveness is a is a difficult mode. Yeah. You know, like once, like I don't even. I'm uncomfortable fighting with people that I love because, like, even when I see in movies and someone's so shitty to their wife. And then she forgives him. I'm like, yeah, but he still said that stuff. Like, how can you let yeah. him back in? You know what I mean? Like, I always have that hard, that difficult part. But with our little story, uh, it was like, no, I really care about Mike. And and it was like, whatever happened in that moment, whatever we were involved in, yeah. it was a lesson for both of us. I think as a friend, it was the intent to say it, but it was definitely harsher than I wanted it to be. But ultimately in the in the in chapter six of it was we like mike Mike, we love mike like it's like why should that be why should we we shouldn't linger and hang on that stuff and even like today when i said i call my wife you know in the morning and what's your day and i she goes whose podcast are you doing today and i said i'm going to do mike mike perbiglia's podcast she went oh mike <laughs> you know what i mean and that says it all yeah yeah you know what i mean yeah so it was like, yeah, it was a it was a weird spot, but I'm I'm glad we got through it because there's been other people that you know you don't come back to. What was like that era of the comedy cellar? People were so mean to each other. Remember that? No, of course. <laughs> it happened yesterday. I was on the, <laughs> I was doing my radio show with Fortune, and uh, and 
I had to, I couldn't use the studio because Robert Kelly was up there. Yeah. It was a scheduling thing. So I run downstairs to the olive tree and I've got my headphones on and I'm doing the radio show. Yeah. And, and Robert comes down because I had walked in on him and then I left and he comes down and he just starts shitting on me yeah, on the yeah. radio. He's like, you son of a, you, you can't walk in there with your big head. No, it's, you can't, it's not a subtle thing. You walk in there with your big, oh your God. big fucking head and you interrupted my podcast. And this is on the air with me oh and God. Fortune and Fortune and my producers are watching. And he's like, uh, you know, it, it's not your studio. You come to town and you act like, that's why you have Fortune on the show because she's nice. You're not really nice. Oh my God. And he goes, all right, I gotta go. I love you. I'll see you later. Oh my and he God. walked out. That's so funny. And Fortune was like, God, New York comics. They love to Woo. rip each other apart and then say, I love you at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Boston too, of course, Robert's yeah. Boston. And yeah. so was Patrice. Patrice was oh my Boston. God. Patrice used to go, Big Head Leah, Mike, Big Head Leah. <laughs> and I was like, Patrice, you got the biggest head I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's the biggest head. You, I mean, I don't, I don't want to insult you. You have the biggest head of any human I've seen. Not even a comedian. And of course, he's so his mean. voice was so loud yeah. that he would overpower anything you were saying. Oh, a hundred percent. There would be nights in the early two thousands. <laughs> so mean. Where I would between him and Jim Norton, who yeah. I love, and and. And I did like Patrice, and I think he's a brilliant comic, but like, um, they would be so mean. It, it would be, and did they ever do this one to you? You'd walk, you, you'd go, you'd leave for the night, and then Jim Norton would go, oh, yeah. hey, Mike. And then I look around, and then they'd continue talking to each other as though they'd get you to turn back. Yeah, as though nobody said anything. Uh -huh. And then I'd walk again, Mike. And they'd say it just enough that you turn. <laughs> And then they keep talking to each other as though not, and and it's cruel. <laughs> it's so mean. Have they done it to you? Oh, they did. It, to, it was their. They did that to everybody for a long time. Oh my god! As soon as you'd be leaving, hey, oh yeah, wait, Tom, come <laughs> back. And they're all like, oh, they got me again. They got me again. But it ne it's never stops. I mean, it's a love language of some sort. Like, I walked into the cellar on Sunday night, and I walk in and. As soon as I get up to, this is Colin by himself, Colin and Ava. Colin Quinn. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, as soon as I walked up, Tom, nobody is happy that you're back in New oh York. Oh my God. <laughs> That's so good. Colin's one of the great, like, observational comedians mm. combined with yeah. being cruel <laughs> to his friends, people <laughs> yeah. like you who are his friends. I know. And, and, and the problem with the problem with Colin as opposed to the other ones is that he's right. He's often he's right. He's so intuitive yeah. about human nature. Yeah. And if he says that you're he'll nail no, it. Then if he says nobody's glad you're back, kind of no one's glad you're back. <laughs> right. <laughs> or at least I'm walking in there acting like everyone should be happy. Oh my gosh. I mean he's boom, like an like a laser beam. He's so good. Yeah. That. What's the meanest? What's the thing that people say to you that's the the meanest and like maybe true? <laughs> <laughs> like they not that they not that they not that this one it's still still in my head. It's 15 years later from when he said it. It was just so damn funny, but there is a little bit of truth to it. When uh Mulaney was on my I do this radio show called Come to Papa, which is like a variety show. It's like music and sketch and comedians. And Mulaney was on <laughs> in Largo. And, uh, and they're supposed to be mean. They're supposed to be saying, I wrote the script. This is funny. You're supposed to be insulting me. They're supposed to be coming at yeah. me. So think him and <clears throat> AG or Al Madrigal, somebody. <laughs> and Mulaney said, and Mulaney called me he was like, get out of here. He's talking to me. And he goes, get out of here, Jim Gaffacant. Oh, <laughs> my God. Jim, Jim Gaffacant. Gaffacant. It's so Whoa. brilliant. Whoa. Uh, because... It's so brilliant. And it, and it lingered because it was like, ouch. Because Gaffigan is always, he's always huge. Yeah. He kind of does the same thing. 
but he's just so much bigger. He's huge. He's and a he's a great he's, observational comedian. And a and, great actor. Yeah. And there is a sense of me chasing Jim oh, in a way. We, we, we started together. And we, he, Jim Gaffacant. Oh, God. Is such a brilliant <laughs> line. Yeah, that one stuck with me. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's so well written. Mulaney is a... Uh, is a, is a, is a, is a, uh, Mulaney's a beast, actually. <laughs> and his persona hasn't typically yeah. allowed for him to really shiv people. And yeah, when, but when you, when you start kicking around, uh, you know, lines about comedians like Gaffa Cant, he's as funny as they come. Well, the problem and with mean, this, as mean as they the come. problem with this hornet's nest that we live in, yeah of comedy you're dealing with brilliant minds yeah you're dealing with very insightful very truthful very funny very yeah. cutting if they yeah i mean and to your point the love language actually <laughs> is insult the not the the true insult oh. is nothing oh a hundred percent the most insulting thing that can happen in a group of comedian friends yeah is no one makes jokes at your expense <laughs> I know. It's really <laughs> because true. Because nobody cares. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's such a weird thing. And it's a, it's this odd continuation of coming from Massachusetts mm -hmm. and being bullied as a kid. I mean, I was bullied, got beat up a lot. And then it's like you move to New York and it's like, and you're, and you're I'm in, I was in my 20s. And I are like, I guess it's the same. It doesn't <laughs> change at all. <laughs> it doesn't change in one bit. And it is like like I was I was out on your corner, and when I got here, and I'm just like soaking in the neighborhood, and there are these three sixty five year old yeah. older Italian guys all hanging around yeah. a car, ripping each other. Oh, were they ripping apart. each other apart? That's nice. Ripping each other apart. Yeah, yeah. That's what you do in <laughs> families. It's like if you can mock everybody, it's like it's it's fun. We have a sense of humor about ourselves, and it is a great thing, you know. Yeah. The problem with us is that you have the best comedic minds in the world <laughs> taking yeah. a shot at you, which is uh, there's no mercy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Of, yeah. Speaking of Italians, great line from your book. When Italians are trying to be quiet, they are emotional, expressive, and loud. <laughs> it's like dead on. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think my wife, yeah. Jenny, sometimes is beside herself with um the how loud my family is uh -huh. like everyone talks at the same time it's not unlike a comedian's table yeah where it's just like the loudest voice wins <laughs> yeah. the other voices fall away they don't even stop yeah. talking they just blend into the into the ether <laughs> this is a quote from from your last book you're doing great You've written three books now, so you're making a lot of comedians feel bad about themselves. I'm an author now. <laughs> Here's a quote from You're Doing Great. We're all somewhat unpleasant, which is another way of saying disgusting, and we're all flawed, all of us. That's what love is, finding someone whose flaws you can put up with. And it's like a beautiful quote because it's it's um, unexpected. It takes, uh -huh. takes, a twi it takes a turn. It seems like it's sentimental, and then it's not. Right, right. But with by not being sentimental, sentimental kind of is sentimental in a certain yeah way. i mean that stuff is like that's all within my sandbox though you know what i mean like yeah sure i'll like uh i did something about that i didn't like dogs and bill burr was like that's what i want to see i want to see you just like taking turns on all the things that people expect that you would like and you don't like yeah them. like that kind of a thing and uh but like for me for edgy i don't consider for me, and it's just maybe it's a mental thing, I don't consider edgy like talking about dying or like any of the stuff within this human thing. I always think of it as uh, culturally the hot buttons in the culture. Yeah. You know what I mean? Talking about abortion, talking about guns. Yeah. I always see that as what edgy is, and I don't really go there. <laughs> It's funny because, like, I always think I know what you mean that that is the tr I think that's the traditional understanding of edgy. But I also think that there's a certain yeah. type of edgy, which is like when you're saying something where 
you really might lose the audience on a personal level. Like I have this bit right now that is not done and I'll say it on here because it's working it out. But it's about how like my wife said to me recently, like, I feel like you're not happy. And I'm like, right. <laughs> That's the whole thing of me. That was the thing when we met, it was cool. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, I'm not yeah. happy and I'm funny about it. You know what I mean? And then we met and that was awesome. But I'm still not happy. And then we had a kid and it's great. But I'm still not happy. Like, but and you think it's funny because you're a comic. I can't get an audience <laughs> also, to fully get behind it. Yeah, you can't? Not yet. Uh -huh. I, I mean, but I'm but I'm fighting it out. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the boxing analogy is like, I'm staying in there. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm punching, I'm jabbing, and I'm trying to find it. And I haven't found it yet seems to me like it would work immediately it's okay it's okay i think that there yeah. is some degree to which an audience wants to i don't know it's like they yeah. they want it to wrap up a little nicer yeah well you that's, ever have that with bits where you're like yeah oh, they like the idea they're they're here for the trip but they want to go to a planet they don't want you to be a bummer also <laughs> yes they want they want they're looking to you for a little bit of hope. Yeah. You know? And if you if you just bum them out and split, they're like, wait, no. Well, yeah, you have to bring it full circle, I think. <laughs> it's funny to kind of take your wife back and like give evidence. But weren't you happy when we had when we went oh. to Disney World? Yeah, but look in this picture. That's not a real smile. Oh, yeah. That's not a real smile. I'm, you know, I mean, we have fun. Yeah, it was fun, but I wasn't happy. <laughs> I wrote what about when we were at the beach that time in the thing? Yeah. Remember when I <laughs> left before dinner for a while? I was crying in the shed. <laughs> oh. oh, that's nice. Give some, examples. Some yeah. kind of like. <laughs> we'll extrapolate it out. <clears throat> the, this is another one from your book you're doing great which i love and also like one of the things about you're doing great and i love your new one too but i just got it so i haven't finished it yet skimmed it skimmed it yeah is that i love the you're doing great book and i highly recommend it to people because it's very encouraging mm -hmm. and yet funny uh-huh you're like a funny gary v <laughs> Like somehow it's, you're pulling it off. Theoretically, yeah. that shouldn't work in comedy. No, I know. Yeah, I, I'm not cynical. I'm not cynical. You're not cynical, but you're real. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. But I think that it's. I think if you if you want to be real and adjust the way you're looking at the world, uh, you should be less cynical. This is as good as it gets, right? And that's okay. Like we have this idea that it's all supposed to be so much greater and so much happier and so much bigger and yeah. so much more rewarding, well, then you're going to be unhappy. But if you really accept this is where it's at, you'll be happy. You can be happy here like because you've already done it. You're doing it. You've actually, there's no finish line. There's no race that you're on. You're in it right now. Yeah. That's yeah, what Pete, you're Pete Holmes said recently, like a, 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 he relayed a famous quote, which is, uh, how you feel about your life right now is how you feel about your life. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's true. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. And when I started doing it, I, I, I took that title from my standup because I was on the road and I just started telling people, you know, you're, you're doing great. You're doing great. Yeah. Whatever you're going through. And I had all these jokes or whatever. And I, but I was like, ultimately you're doing great. This is it guys. Yeah. This is prime. It's not going to get any better. Like, this is it you know and in, in a short time you're gonna be like people gonna ask you to go out and you're gonna be like are there stairs yeah oh my god <laughs> i'm like so you're doing great and people and i was just i wasn't like a conscious like push to have this be a phrase or anything but people the audience started coming up to me when i would sign books at the end of my shows and they were like thank you for saying that it's weird because I said that to my, I, I, my bad shoulder injury I've been talking about on stage, but I, uh -huh. um, I've been going to a physical therapist and I said to him recently, because he does stuff that makes me in real time happier. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, yeah. like I'm in deep pain, yeah. like chronic pain, uh -huh. and then I'm happier. And I go like, it must be really rewarding 
to make people happier in real time Mm -hmm. to have a profession he goes that's why i do it yeah he goes it's it's that feeling where you can actually help a thing and and there's a result and i think your comedy has it i i I strive for my comedy um i think uh, if you're if you're lucky enough that your job has like a one-to-one relationship with helping people or making them happier in some even the most minuscule of ways i think you're super lucky so lucky so lucky do you have to remind yourself that that's happening i'd say once get once balled every up few in weeks. your career and your stuff and making getting through the set and getting through this friday night every few weeks i have it yeah or maybe once a month i have it where someone says something to me you know i remember last summer in los angeles i was doing the old man in the pool and this and this woman said to me you know i've had a bunch of people die in my life in the last few years and one of them was my dad and tonight i felt like i was laughing with my dad and i was just like oh it just hit me like a truck yeah i was like that's that's why you do it at all yeah no kidding i don't think i don't know i just like making people laugh when i was younger i just liked like being the kid who made people laugh it was just like yeah you know yeah it was just that was just fun yeah but now i'm seeing the depth of it and i you know we're all in it for different reasons but i consciously now remind myself of it before i go out oh you do this is yeah it's not all about me this is this, this is about them it is about them yeah and uh I try and be conscious of it because, you know, it's not going to be like that for everybody in the audience, but it is a pretty huge thing. And it's a corny thing to be like, I do it to make people happy and all that. And I, I, I have a bunch of comedians popping off in my head like, that's not why I do it. No, of course. <laughs> but, I, of course. but I do see it a little bit at this age. I see it as a, kind of a bit of a mission. That's what it's for. It's for, yeah. honestly, it's for, it's for the one person who needs it yeah in that audience yeah by the way i'm saying your shows only one person really gets it in your shows per not every show (laughs) i was just gonna say because i sign books (laughs) and some people are just running for the exits (laughs) and i'm there with a fresh sharpie Uh, (laughs) not signing anything does cynthia ever does your wife cynthia ever see a bit that you do and go like you know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, like is do you have to talk about that you have to you know a little mean? bit like what is it when in this when the subject matter veers into what do you find that um i, th- I feel like it's a little bit more of um of uh taking shots maybe at um at the drudgery of marriage yeah you know because it's and it's changed like when we when when we're all young we're all beautiful and confident and stuff and the older you get the more vulnerable you feel oh interesting yeah you know and uh you know i feel vulnerable of course i know she feels vulnerable and so if i so things are things can hit now that maybe you're a little bit like poking that vulnerability you know what i mean yeah and i my philosophy is always if everything anyone in my relationships and my family uh should be okay with the jokes if we're solid in real life oh interesting and so if she's unhappy with a portrayal of her in a joke yeah uh it's less about the joke than it is about my not being attentive or taking care of her in real life yeah you know what i mean oh yeah it's like she it's an indicator if she's if if she's saying i don't like this joke that's a warning light that whatever that subject is you should kind of pay attention to it there's yeah in real life you should be like oh have you not been telling her she's the most beautiful person yeah in the world maybe not for five years i haven't yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. it kind of makes you makes me look a little in like that which is a lot harder to fix than just not do the joke but i think it's a, a i think it's uh yeah there's a there's a parallel 
between what you're describing and journaling, which is, I always tell the listeners of the show, because a lot of creatives listen to the show is like, if you can grab a notebook and, and journal and write down the things you feel strongly about, yeah. get them out, yeah, yeah. angriest about, saddest about, because mm -hmm. you can start to read them back and zoom out and see your own life as a story. And, yeah. and, uh, and when you see your own life as a story, you can encourage the main character to make better decisions. That's great and, advice. And, uh, and, but that's, I think that's true in what you're saying in relation to sometimes when you're on stage, you go, oh, actually this is symptomatic of something actually going on that right. I'm not dealing with. Yeah. I, I had one where I <laughs> took it out of my act where I go like, marriage is like prison, but it's sort of like a Scandinavian prison where it's on an island and you can learn a skill and it seems like you can leave, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a funny joke, but it had like an aftertaste to uh -huh. it. And so I took it out. Yeah. And it's just like. I was like, it's yeah. not worth, the laugh is fun, uh -huh. the joke's fun, yeah. but it's not quite right. Yeah. It's funny because the way you're talking is the way I think with the relationship with the audience. Yeah. Like them. And, uh, you know, it is such a kind way to go at comedy. Like that is a very, th that and the other joke you told uh, about not being happy. Yeah. Those are... You have to have real empathy and be very thoughtful and sensitive to think like, I'm going to pull that because the audience is feeling slightly uncomfortable. Right. With it. I mean, it is at such a level of kindness <laughs> that but, that is like you could go so much further. <laughs> yeah, but maybe that's what I should do too. I mean, that, well, that sometimes sometimes you can go further and actually it makes it better. Mm -hmm. because the joke's better yeah and the joke is more complex yeah like in some ways i think that joke sometimes it's like a case of like a joke needs more or it needs less yeah a hundred percent like you need to do five minutes on that or you need to do <laughs> 10 seconds on that uh scandinavian prison no one knows what that is i know what you mean i actually got it I, I if got you it. just said prison if you're like Prison, but like one of those nice ones upstate where you can learn, oh, you can, where, you, where they let you finger paint and it seems oh like you're gosh. having a good time, but they won't let you leave. Oh, yeah. Because I'm trying to think, White -collar what's a prison? Scandinavian prison? And should I know what a I Scandinavian Michael, prison is? I got it from the Michael Moore movie was, about capitalism, <laughs> yeah. where, where it was like he went around the world to all these different places uh -huh. where they kind of do things better. Yeah. And, and one of them was a Scandinavian prison. And it was like, <laughs> oh, it's nice. Yeah. And actually, like, there's a lot higher rates of, like, reforming people because, like, they're learning a skill and all that kind of stuff. But I, I know All of mean. that description is has just gotten in the way of you it's getting the, to the punchline. Tom, line. please. It was, <laughs> it's in the footnotes. It's so funny, it's right? In the, it's in the, it's in the yeah. DVD extras. <laughs> <laughs> this is my brother Joe wrote this question, which I think is great. It's a quote from your book. You're writing about an ex-girlfriend who you ca who called her breasts her crazy aunts, <laughs> which is a great line on its own. Yeah. And she took them out every chance she got. As my grandfather would have said, she was a real gamer. <laughs> I loved her, but eating with her was a nightmare. She chewed so loudly, people at other tables thought she was kidding. <laughs> she thought yeah. she was kidding. She slurped soup. Sucked on clamshells and chomped on seeds. Patrons would look over in amazement as she shoveled food into her mouth like her face was an angry wood chipper. Joe Berbiglia's question is, is this woman going to recognize herself in the book and beat the shit out of you? <laughs> it's a good question. You have that, right? When you do it, you're like, ooh, this one's close. What's well, a dark? I've disguised a it a little bit, yeah. but did I disguise it enough? <laughs> that, that's a deep cut yeah i have i have friends from that's from the, the new book from the previous book i had a a comment about a friend of mine who um licks their fingers and stuff when yeah. they eat and yeah. i thought oh for sure i'm busted on this yeah they're gonna know for yeah. sure yeah it's Nothing. never them it's never no, them. It's never them. It's never them. You were, I, again, people, <laughs> creatives listen to the show. People ask me this all the time. They message me. Yeah. How do you write when you know that it's going to, these people are going to read it? I always go, change the name, 
<laughs> add some details that aren't true. Yep. You know, uh-huh. Ta- you know, take away something, add us something. They never know. They never know. You don't even have to add that many details. People can't even see. People can't see themselves. I know. Do you have any half written bits right now that you're sort of like tinkering with on stage? I'm tr- I'm working on this this one chunk where it's in the realm of um the great thing about 23 and me and these DNA tests and stuff is that you uh not only find out who you are but you find out all your family secrets. Mm-hmm. Uh we were a little I knew we knew we were going to be Italian and German but there was a little French in there and I said to my mother where the French come from? She goes, oh, secrets out. Your grandmother was a whore. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, what? And then I talk about how that generation had secrets. Like they just did not talk about yes. stuff. Yes. They were able to just, able to or just did anything that was uncomfortable, anything that was undiagnosed, yeah. anything that was a sh- shameful in front of the neighbors, they just stuck it in the attic, just yeah. put it in the attic. And, um, and I said, there's, something wrong about that but there's also something right about that there's also something great that you could actually have secrets <laughs> right you could actually not talk about certain things yeah and we've come so far the other way that we're there's no secrets to yeah. the point where we're like ripping tearing down great people because they had a flaw yeah martin luther king was great you know he cheated on his wife yeah eh. jfk was great right yeah he had an affair with marilyn yeah, monroe yeah, yeah. Mother Teresa, well, she was a stripper in Calcutta. <laughs> I don't think that's right. <laughs> is that right? I don't, I don't think, think that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so this is the part that I'm working on is, uh, it's great that we don't have secrets. It's great that we deal with mental health. It's great that we're not putting things in the attic. But we're, we are a little too into ourselves. Mm. We're a little too into, what a luxury. That we can all just be analyzing our feelings and our place in the world mm. every second. And look, therapy's great. It's nice to have some place to go to talk things out, especially when your wife when your wife and your when your friends and family are sick of listening to you. Yeah. It's nice to go play, call your mom horrible name somewhere. That's why it costs two hundred dollars because it's worth it. <laughs> um and I said It's okay to go to therapy and it's good to go and have an outlet as long as you know you're not going to get fixed. Right. We uh, aren't robots that break and then go to the repair shop. We're constantly changing, moving, evolving. Yeah. So why would you pay attention to your emotions every second? I say to the audience, uh, so just to give a demarcation, this is the part that I'm, it's from that part. When I start to talk about therapy is maybe not the best thing to do all the time yeah i'm feeling the room wobble a little yeah and then i say um i say to the audience you're different now than when you walked in here i know for a fact you're slightly different emotionally than when you came in yeah. that's how much we change yeah the weeds wearing off the alcohol's kicking in yeah some of you were wishing you hadn't peed especially in the center section yeah and uh I say, sometimes I'll be at the kitchen sink doing dishes. And this is obviously a whole chunk that I'm struggling with. Sometimes I'll be at the kitchen sink doing dishes and I'll think, I feel good right now. I don't know if it's the weather or I ate something great or got a good night's sleep. But right now, for some reason, everything is A-OK. And I'll walk into the hallway, turn the corner and go, fuck this place. Yeah. And whose shoes are the, I, I don't even talk like that. Yeah. Why am I even thinking this? Whose shoes are those? Why do I live here? What is going on? And then go back downstairs and see my dog and think, ah, it is a nice day. Yeah. So the things for you, my question's for you, yeah. Obi-Wan. <laughs> um, is the therapy, a, am I off base in kind of figuring that out? Because I, no, I think I think it's a pro- the proclamation. I think is really interesting. It's self obsessed culture. Mm-hmm. I find it to be so relatable. Like I find, especially especially the part where you go, the therapy part. I think is a little bit outward facing in the sense of like uh, it's a it's mm-hmm. a judgment of mm-hmm. culture in general as mm-hmm. opposed to it's about you. 
Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm more engaged when you start talking about I'm washing the dishes and I feel amazing and then I feel terrible and then I feel amazing again within the span of like yeah. five minutes. I, for me, I'm transported into your shoes mm -hmm. and I'm like, yeah, I know that feeling so much. Yeah. I wrote a joke years ago. But I never got it to work where I go like, I go, sometimes I literally, I'm just like, life is beautiful like literally the words that are the most cliche yeah yeah and yeah sometimes i'm like cookies are stupid and, <laughs> and they're not stupid they're beautiful you know and it, it was a joke yeah. that never quite worked but like yeah it's the same kind of idea of like of like i think people can completely relate to that idea and i think that oddly mm. the more specific you get with washing the dishes and your dog and 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 this and that the more specific you get and even like a flip flop, like, uh, you know, you you know, and then I stub my toe on a nail. That's blah blah blah. And I'm like, why do you, I only fix this house after ten years? And then you know, I'm I'm yeah. like, patching it up with with uh with a uh, <laughs> you know with a with a bandaid. My wife comes over and she goes, uh, you know, and she kisses me on the forehead, and I go, I'm so lucky to be alive. You know, <laughs> like, right. the, yeah. like there's a there's a way in which. It can go yeah. back and forth and back yeah, and forth yeah, yeah. with the specificity. That's good. To the point where the audience at a certain point is like, they're in on your life. Yeah. It's almost take out that wobbly part yeah. and then get into the flip-flops. Uh, take I out that so. awkward bridge in between. Now, here's my other question. That's a great fix. Here's another question. I don't say fuck in my act. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I do either. I didn't in the last couple. I Yeah. The last two shows. And... um talking about that audience and whether or not you're pushing them away or whatever yeah. you know i have some people i know who are like it's the biggest laugh of the act right now when you oh in that when yeah, i go yeah. fuck this place oh yeah yeah it is the biggest laugh yeah in the act and i'll ask people on this tour i'll ask my whoever is that a problem saying fuck and they say you saying fuck you saying that one fuck is not what you think it is. Oh. Here's my argument. I, uh, famously, Jim Gaffigan said that the cursing cursing in your act is like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just using steroids. Right. <laughs> <laughs> which i think is a funny it's a funny way of looking at it yeah i always try to think like <laughs> what are the alts that don't have the word fuck and then there's nothing wrong by the way there's nothing wrong with the word fuck and there's nothing wrong with any piece of language in my opinion um with some exceptions um the, <laughs> <laughs> the but generally like cursing i i'm like who cares other than I actually like the fact that my audiences are filled with people who are aged 12 to 112. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh -huh. You don't have to like it. You don't have, but I, I yeah. enjoy that. Like, you know, pe because I don't curse that much, people who are over 70 will come to my shows Me too. and people will bring 12 year olds. And I think that's fun. Yeah. It's and great. <clears throat> so anyway, I, I'm always like, so, okay. So, so let's just brainstorm. Okay, say, tell me the line in context, and then I'll say one, and then you say one, and then I'll say one, and you say one. Say the line? Yeah, yeah. Uh, some, uh, I'll be doing the dishes and thinking, everything is A-OK. -okay. And then I'll walk out into the hallway and turn the hall. I, I'll walk out into the hallway, turn the corner, and go, fuck this place. Okay, or I wish I was dead. Or... I hate it here. <laughs> or, <laughs> um, 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 my, my, um, I wish I had never been born. This day sucks. <laughs> None of these are funny. No. Nope. They're not funny enough. No. Um, screw this place doesn't do it there is a thing there is a there is a reason that that word has so much power yeah and there is a Fuck reason yeah. that every single person in that audience maybe four of them have said it or say it because it is conveying 
in a very guttural human yeah. level. Wah. Can I pitch one more? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you go, sometimes, is it the dishes that you did? Yeah. Sometimes I'm washing the dishes and I think my life is a-okay. A -okay. And then sometimes I, and, th and then I walk into the other room. Turn and the corner and I say. I turn the corner and I say, if I died at this second, no one would notice. <laughs> it's good. It's not bad. <laughs> it's, on the, it's on the path. It's on the path. Because it has to get, it has to just go so dark. Yeah, right. And it's it got to, to convey the same emotion that that cathartic fuck and, is saying. And that you've thought. Because I've thought that certainly. Yeah. Yeah. That's a kind of a, the I am a loser vein. Yeah. The I am, yeah. I am lost. I am nothing. I am close yeah. to death. If a boulder fell on my head right now, people would be more worried about moving the boulder. Yeah. Too wordy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like terrible. too like right? Like you it's wanted terrible. to you No, I agree. To, yeah, yeah. You want to short, you know, it, short yeah. and fast. Yeah. Well, well, you solved the bridge. I think there's I think we're making progress. Mm -hmm. So the final thing we do is working it out for a cause. And basically, if you have a nonprofit that you contribute to, and you think does a good job, we contribute to them. We link to them in our show notes and encourage our listeners to, to contribute as well. Beautiful. You got anything? I don't help people. Perfect. No. I've got... <laughs> <laughs> um, my sister's nonprofit is called City Green. Oh, great. And it's in Clifton, New Jersey. And she has built this amazing, amazing organization that creates uh, city gardens and learning gardens for... Uh, underprivileged kids in Passaic and Patterson and Newark and Clifton and all Incredible. of these places. And she has, she took over these abandoned farms wow. and she has, she like delivers vegetables to all of these communities and she has summer camps and all yeah. of these people. This is gorgeous. What learning. are you doing? What are you doing with your life? <sighs> CityGreenOnline.org. I, I don't care. I make people laugh for money. No. Uh, mm, Jim Gaffacant. Ah. Isn't that great? <laughs> so funny. It's so perfect. It's, this, it's a strong burn. It's the strongest burn I've ever had. <laughs>